my name is Michelle Carb, and I am um, a board member on the board of directors for Bright Spot Therapy Dogs, and I am also the trainer for Bright Spot Therapy Dogs. I I got a dog from a rescue organization. Um, it will be four years ago in October, and um, she was like six or seven, and. She was just really gentle and loved everybody and just had this spirit about her and I guess I just thought I should really share her with other people. So I researched some therapy dog organizations and, and found Bright Spot and I connected with Cynthia Hinkley, the director, and um, went through some basic obedience with the dog and, and got her certified and um, we went to a lot of nursing homes and um, I'm a uh, middle school principal so I started bringing her to school with me and um, so that I just got really hooked with uh, doing the work and, and seeing the bond between Coco and, and everybody that she worked with. The kids absolutely love having the dogs at school. Um, I was bringing Coco um, between two and three days a week so she spent about 2,000 hours working at school and one of my guidance counselors also um, got her dog certified and brought her dog and so all five days we'd have a dog at school so the kids absolutely loved it. Um, there certainly were kids with um, emotional needs and anxiety and learning disabilities and kids who didn't speak English as a first language who connected really um, well with the dogs and it helped us work with them. But um, also just sort of typical students would say it would need a break from their day and get to take a walk with the dog or um, take a test with the dog to help with stress so um, the kids absolutely loved having the dogs there I think it just um, made the culture that much more positive and the energy that much more positive and, and parents really appreciated that we that we were doing that so um, through bright spot therapy dogs um, initially your dog should be um, should have basic obedience commands and your dog needs to be a year old if it's a rescue then uh, the dog needs to have lived with its handler for a year at least so um, after that once you've met the one-year requirement the dog should have basic um, obedience skills like sit and stay and down and and come and leave it those sorts of things um, but but more important the dog really should love all people and be really um, comfortable in all sorts of environments. So you start by kind of assessing your dog and thinking if that's a good fit or not, is that going to work out? And if it is, there's a process and um, our website really outlines the steps really well. But the first step is to fill out a screening questionnaire and that goes to, um, that goes to our screener and she goes through and makes sure that your dog um, has kind of what it takes, at least on paper. And then after that, you um, you submit an, a volunteer application. That goes to me because I'm also the Bright Spot Registrar. And uh, so you do that, pay $150 and, um, for the for the training and the course, and then you also um, have to send in a rabies certificate. So once we have those three things, the application, the um, fee, and the rabies certificate, then you're enrolled in a, in a course. And um, courses meet, there's two class meetings for each course. So, um, for example, you know, the first one we have this fall is a September course and it will meet on two Sundays in September for two hours each. So um, there's the course itself and then after that there's practice that the handler and the dog um, do together and then you take an evaluation. So you take a test basically. Um, you and your dog are evaluated as a team and if you pass then um, the, the um, the rest of it is processing. You've got to send in a health certificate, um, a $45 fee for the vest, um, and um, then it's processed. And once you get your welcome packet, you'll get um, a vest for your dog, your ID badge, your dog's ID badge, and proof of liability insurance. And then you can start the work. Some teams are, you know, they do the two, the two classes and they do some practice for a couple of weeks and then they get, um, they, they pass the evaluation and they send everything in. But total, it's at least six or seven weeks. That would be the shortest. There are other people who really realize that they need some more practice, that as a team they, um, you know, and their dogs need some more work and they, and they will wait and they will get out and um, get their dog in a lot of different places because it, it's one thing for the dog to, um, no basic commands, but it's another thing to um, 
know those commands um, in all kinds of settings. So, you know, um, at a football game, in, um, in the bank, at a pet store. So the idea is to get your dog out and about and practicing um, basic commands, but also being really responsive to you in all kinds of situations and really interacting with people and just loving that. Sometimes it, people come into um, a class with their dog thinking that it's about the dog, but it's really about the owner. Um, for the most part, dogs want to do what, what we want them to do, but it's how we communicate with them, how much we practice with them so they know what we expect. So I think that's one of the common misconceptions is that um, this is training for the dog. It's more training for the handler. Certainly it's training for both, but um, once you understand how to read your dog a little bit, and once you understand, um, once you can be consistent with your dog, um, in, the, in most cases, your dog wants to please you and will do what you want. I think that one of the things is, that is hard is um, oftentimes handlers come and they're nervous. And I think, you know, it's a new environment when you have a class and there are, um, say, seven or eight or nine dogs and seven or eight or nine handlers it's a very charged environment for the dog. So the dog's gonna get excited, the dog might jump, the dog might wanna play with another dog. That's, that's what dogs do. And sometimes handlers are very nervous and they tense up and when you do that, your dog feels that. So I think, um, you know, that's, that's a struggle at some level, but I think um, my style is very calm. I'm very calm, so I really try to um, reassure handlers it's okay, we're gonna get through it. Um, you know, and, and, and once the handlers relax and the dogs kind of get used to the new environment, then things really settle in nicely. Well, I love teaching anyway because I'm a, um, I was a teacher for so many years, so I really enjoy um, working with people and their dogs, um, helping them refine skills and get better at what they do um, and um, and also knowing that they're going to go on to do really great things to help people that that feels really good all dogs just like people are very are different so um, I think in nursing homes there's um, sometimes a lot of noise there can be um, you know old people can be very rough sometimes not always there's the medical equipment there can be food on the floor, there can be pills on the floor, there's all that stuff to, th to consider. And then in an elementary school or any school, there are kids who can be you know, out of control sometimes, they can be rough, there's a lot of stimulation. So they're two very different environments, they're both very charged. And I think one of the best things you can do is observe your dog. So when you're out in public, does your dog like kids, does your dog gravitate towards kids, is your dog calm around kids, or does do kids make your dog anxious? And, and in, you never want to force your dog into a situation when he or she's not comfortable. Um, you may want to be a reading buddy team, uh, but your dog may not be suited to it, and you may figure that out just by getting him or her out and about, but maybe a wonderful dog at the hospital. So, um, again, all environments are pretty charged for dogs. They're pretty, um, there's a lot of stimulation for them. They're new. Um, you really have to kind of know your dog really well and get out and about into public with your dog and see what, what your dog is most comfortable with and most suited for. And sometimes that changes. A younger dog sometimes will not just lay there for students to read too very long because they just don't have that attention span. Um, whereas a dog who's 10 or 11 may and may really not want to be walking around a nursing home. So you should consider breed and age and most importantly personality and, and what your dog seems to respond the best to and enjoy. Coco and I were, that was my dog that went to my school. We were a Reading Buddies team. So we did some of that at my school, but I've also participated in the program at the Carl with Coco. Um, it's a wonderful program, um, and again, uh, for the most part, once um, handlers settle down, dogs will settle down. Not all dogs are reading buddies, uh, but, but when they are, it, it's a pretty magical thing to watch.